Right. So what I want to do for starters is just go through um, and have you all, because this is going to be recorded. It's going to go out on you know the web, and so not everybody knows you like the Capital Region knows you. So it would be nice to just kind of start off with, um, if you could just say your name, a little bit about you know your role, your company. We won't get into the specifics of what we're talking about tonight, which is really about you know how you've weathered the pandemic, how your leadership style has maybe changed, how you've grown, made adjustments you've made. But for starters, let's just uh, we'll start with Kat and just kind of go through Darren. Uh, Guha, Mike Sakosio, and Tony, and just say you know who you are, a little bit about yourself and your your company, and then we'll get into the more specifics. So starting with you, Kat. Uh, hi everyone. Um, I am the president of Coppet and Mopco Improv Theater. So we have two businesses in one. Uh, one is an improvisational theater company, which in normal times. Uh, performs out of an old firehouse, a hundred year old firehouse by way of illicit strip club on North Bay Street <laughs> in Schenectady. It was featured on the Jerry Springer show back in the day. Yeah, I remember. Right. Yeah. And then it was closed. And we are of course closed, although we continue to uh, do all of our shows and classes online in space just like this, coming to a screen near you every Friday and Saturday night. Uh, and then the other part of our business is Coppet, which is an organizational consulting and training company which works with clients globally. And we are thriving. We're going strong. We had already been doing a lot of virtual training because we had a lot of global clients who are asking for that. Um, and and you're, you have high profile, name a couple of your, you have some high profile clients. Can you name a couple of them? Uh, we work with places like Apple and Facebook and PricewaterhouseCoopers and... Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, we'll get into the specifics about, because it sounds like you already got some stuff that I can't wait to hear about how you've uh, made some of the pivots there. Darren, by the way, Tony, you earlier, you didn't, I, I mentioned this. Do you see something in uh, over Darren's, uh, what is it, his left shoulder in this picture right there? The biz I, lab, in, yes, the biz lab in Schenectady right there. <laughs> so, uh, so Darren, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and your company? Sure. Uh, my name is Darren Janelle. I run a software company here in Schenectady, New York with my brother, Jason. We have uh, just over 90 people on the team and we build custom software applications for businesses. Awesome. Awesome. Guha. Uh, I'm Guha Bala and um, I have a couple different things going on. I also work with my brother, uh, Karthik, and uh, we have Valen Studios, make video games uh, and Troy. And Valen Ventures, we do venture investments in game and game-related technology companies. Um, you know, around the country, we, we look at global opportunities as well. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much. Michael. Okay. okay. Hi, I'm Mike Sikosio. I'm the Executive Director, City Mission of Schenectady. And, and we are working with homeless and under-resourced men, women, and children in Schenectady. And there to not only help them get back on their feet, but become transformational leaders in our community. Awesome. And how many years have you been there, Mike? 31 years. 31 years. Wow, that's awesome. And Tony. Hello, everybody. Tony Smitella, President and CEO of TransFinder. We do routing software for school district, but also started uh, New York Biz Lab, uh, something I was always dreaming of, just bringing technology people and just got to know so many people. Uh, a lot of you guys, Darren and Guha, obviously, really met you guys through that. I knew you guys from the past, and of course, yeah, love Darren. Love love your uh, YouTube videos. I used to love those things. It motivated me to watch those things. But but it was a great way to just bring more technology. I feel like you know, I've been pushing. We need more technology people in this region. So and uh, you know just keep pushing every day. So it's a pleasure to have all you guys together today. Great. Thank you. And so as I mentioned earlier, you guys can all feel free to jump in. But I want us to start off with on a little bit of a personal note. And I'm not going to go in any order, but I do want to hear from all of you. So if I, and I'm also kind of like an auctioneer. So if you, it's just a little twitch, I usually call on you. And it, so, um, so just in general, how are you guys doing personally? You know, how are you keeping your spirits up? Are you able to keep your spirits up? You have ups and downs during this time. So just on a personal level, how's everybody doing? I'll, I'll jump in there, Rick. Uh, I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I got a wife and four kids. And so we're doing a lot of things around the house, spending a lot of really awesome uh, quality family time. 
in terms of COVID, I, I go through this uh, kind of up and down, you know, sometimes I'm like, ah, we're overreacting. This thing's not a big deal. And I hear about someone close to me really getting affected with it. And I'm like, wow, the world's ending. And then I'll kind of go back and forth and back and forth. So that, that's definitely been me a yo-yo of emotions on this. I can definitely relate to that exact same thing. Somebody else. So I think, you know, for, for my part, you know, I would say it's been, it's been mixed. It's been a bunch of challenges. It's been some opportunities as well. Um, you know, I actually, my whole family went through COVID, you know, in my house. Oh, I didn't know so that. Seven of us. I have, uh, I my wife that. and I, we have three girls and uh, her parents off. Well, now they moved uh, to an apartment so we could do some more family distancing, but we had all seven of us, uh, was it, uh, wow. of us were here. Wow. We all got them wow. at the same time. They were both in the hospital. One was on a ventilator. Wow. Oh, for, wow. Uh, when was that? When was that, Guha? It was the end of March, beginning of April. So it really, was really, really in the high. middle of when the cases were mounting up here. Wow. And it was grim. It was it was tough, you know, because most yeah. people on a ventilator were dying at that time. Yeah. And uh, But we're all better. We're wow. all through it. We're on the other no, side. No, I can really say thoroughly, like, it is really good to see you. Yeah, well, it's, it's always good to see, but it's, it's a really, really nasty. Disease. It's a really nasty disease. Well, uh, yeah. And um, you know, I'm, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I had the milder case actually in my family, but we're all back to. There are some lingering effects of it, um, in a sense of, like my wife's sense of smell still hasn't returned now, ninety days after wow. the symptoms have finished. So I think there's some long-term effects that people don't really understand. You know, at this mm -hmm. point. Um, and you lose a little bit of hair and, you know, stuff like that, that just, you know, is new yeah. uh, and that people don't really understand about it. And uh, I really appreciate the public health effort that New York has put forward because, you know, here in the capital region, we don't really see as much of it. I mean, it's only 3% of the population that were tested positive for antibodies uh, here, but uh, it's because of the steps that we've taken that we're healthier for it. So if you don't get it, you're like, would I have ever gotten it? And that's always a sort of the dilemma, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't want it, <laughs> first of all. No. And we can see what's happening around the country right now, and it's a freaking disaster. It is. Um, and I worry about that because, you know, for our industry, um, you know, people are spending time at home, so the video game business is booming. It was actually up 100% from last year. Wow. In May. It's like 100% year on your growth and demand. In wow. video games. Now, Darren, part of your business services, uh, our, our sector as well. Yep. Um, so we can look at the bright side of that, but at some point, unemployment benefits run out. At some point, um, you know, the macro things that are going on in the economy will catch up. So it does, I, I would say, on Darren's note of positivity, there's a lot of positives in, in, in this, in the sense that I'm not traveling anywhere. And that's returned my time with my family to me. I mean, we actually really appreciate each other. And I've been hearing about each um, other. more family dinners uh, like never before, you know. Yeah, I cook more than I ever did. I really enjoy cooking, but I can do it now. I can actually do it now, you know, and I have to have the time to do it. And That's I really cool. enjoy doing that. Uh, so, so there's a bunch of things that says, look, I mean, you can cut all the complexity mm -hmm. out of your life and return to this kind of more simple form, which is really enriching. And so I've really appreciated that. And actually being on the other side of COVID, I really appreciate it <laughs> you know, even more. Good. So I think it's been, it is challenging though, from a work standpoint, I miss seeing people, I miss meeting them. It's weird not to be able to shake hands and that kind of thing, so I miss it. And uh, I, I see, you know, it's just a train in negative news, right? You know, we don't see anything positive, you know, that's coming out. Today it was Canada and U.S. suspect Russian hacking of COVID testing sites. This is horrible, you know. Right. I mean, right, right. So it's 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 got its tax. Yeah. Anyway, I, you on can to somebody else. Day. Sometimes I'm a news guy, and um, sometimes I it's like if I start my day watching one of the like Good Morning America, which they should just take the word "good" out of it. It's like Morning America. <laughs> <laughs> it can get you really down, you know. It can really. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Others, thanks so much. I did not know that about that. Mm -hmm. Either. I didn't. That's that was that's news to me. So there, well, I mean, Darren, there's one more person that you know now. That was yeah. Michael. Well, I mean, I think uh, if I don't, if you guys, uh, I mean, I think the scary part is an understatement. Uh, it's really ended up being that initially when we all went remote, uh, we we're able to right away gain the groove. So I, that was great. We we barely missed. We really barely missed a beat, and we're extremely grateful that. 
we're able to help our clients do other things than just transporting kids so, to and from school. Tony, how do closed. you how do you stay upbeat? And then I want to go to Mike and Kat. How do you stay upbeat? So, in the so of- stay upbeat is honestly, I talk on a phone all the time. I'm doing meetings. I've never met with so many people virtually. I mean, even just one on one. I didn't even do this one on one. I am I am from day from morning to night. I'm on the, I'm on my phone. By the way, I'm in the office right now. And, and Kat, by the way, I'm at 440 State Street. Does that ring a bell? Of course, that's our old space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you. I'm <laughs> on the first first floor. Space. You are. You are. You know. I mean, obviously, you know the building. I completely. You know, we yes. knocked it down. It. So you're somewhere. Just. I'm on the third floor. I think you were on the second floor. So that's we're right. close. I could just feel your your. <laughs> uh, honestly, I need people. I I thought I was gonna have a hard time, guys. I need people to be around me. I really need that to talk to people. I'm a hugger. I shake hands. Oh man, I, I thought I was gonna just lose it. But guess what? Things like Zoom, we use Teams at the company. I'm connecting with people and I'm getting the same ideas. I'm on my cell phone text. I've actually never been connected so much. Mm. That, Very good. That's good. And I and I love that. And I think this is where we gotta be innovative. Um, yeah. but one thing we're gonna, I get, to that. Like, I wanna, we're gonna get to that. I wanna get to that. That's that's Mike, and that's my Kat. number one way. Yeah. No. You know, how are you doing personally? How are, how are you yeah, personally doing great? Been blessed with good health. So after hearing um, Guha speak, I realized what a blessing that is and not to take that for granted. As difficult as this is a city mission, we've been open throughout as an essential business. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But as a leader, as much as we dislike this time, as much as I pray it ends quickly, there's an energy comes from facing great crisis, right? I mean, this is what energizes leaders when you're in a situation bigger than you. And so what has been very rewarding for me is being placed in a situation where I gotta get better. I I realized early on in COVID, I'm not a good enough leader or person right now to handle this. So that was a catalyst to growth. And I guess my, my report back is, I think we have grown. We're better than we were before this started. And at the end of the day, from a leadership perspective, that, that's a real special breakthrough. That's all. Can I ask, I, you made me think of a question I don't want to forget. Just, you can nod your head or say yes. Would you say that you are all better off now as leaders and just as in you know, your companies now than you were four months ago? Yes. Yes. Ooh. I think so. You think so? Okay. Definitely. I don't, I don't. I don't know the answer to that question. Okay, I saw you look. It looked like you were pausing a little bit. I would say it's. Um, there are things that we would do differently now, even if we went back to a state of normalcy like from before. Um, and then there are other things that uh, I'd say. You know, it depends on where you get your energy from. You know, I get a lot of energy from other people, and you know, this whole screen thing. It has its limitations. You know, I, I went into the, we started limited number of people in the office um, a couple of weeks ago. We have to do some multiplayer game testing that requires you to be co-located. And so I rotate in with a couple of our senior managers uh, a couple of times a week in Detroit. Uh, most most of the staff still offsite uh, in their homes. Um, and it's just better. It is better. I mean, Zoom is not a substitute. I mean, it's helpful. And it's actually, it can be used in a number of different ways that are very productive. But, you know, there's body language, there's energy, there's this magnetism, yeah. there's the, I don't understand you, but I want to, and there's unscheduled nat- nature of new ideas, but it's just how we care for each other is just a little different yeah. in person. I don't think any of that is better. Right, <laughs> no, right. I could do a better job in person. Kat. Uh yeah, I mean, I'll take your last question first. Um, I think there are certainly all sorts of ways that we've grown and developed as people and leaders. And I think that that's true um, in any moment that you're stretched or, or challenged or, you know, or any moment of your life. I think there's an opportunity to learn and grow. And it's up to us. One of our One of our obligations as leaders is to take any moment that comes along and stretch and grow and be our best selves. So certainly there, this, uh, this moment, like every other, has uh, presented us with that opportunity. Um, and as you say, Huha, there are things that we will not go back to 
doing in the old way. And I think that's true for us as a, as a community. I think it's true for us as a nation. I think we're all confronting some things and saying, oh, we do not want to go back to the way it was before. And I think as a world, we're probably saying we don't want to go back to everything the way it was before. Um, but I don't know that if we that we would trade those lessons necessarily for the price that we're paying, um, especially those of us who know people who are sick or gone based right. on this pandemic. And I, I, I also don't think that the price that's being paid is equally distributed like it wasn't before. So um, and how are you of, staying? How are you like personally in terms of well, your mood, right. your spirits? Yeah, right? yeah. Like, so so that's or? where I'm going. Right. So um, so my answer to your first question about how we're doing is um, the, the sort of phrase that rattles around in my head all the time is that we feel unfairly lucky, I think is the way to sum it up. We um, we are healthy. We have a house with a backyard. We've been tending our garden. Um, we have work, you know, and um, we get to continue to be creative. We have people in our space that we can touch. Uh, we have resources. So um, we continue to be unfairly lucky. And you know what? Um, so that's one thing. And the other thought that has that I've been sort of obsessed with in this time is uh, with all of the things that are not different. I, we talk so much about what is different and I'm just struck over and over again with by what is not different. So what's and not one different? Of the, one of the things that's not different is that we're unfairly lucky. <laughs> We've been unfairly lucky compared to, you know, most people in the world for, a, you know, forever. Uh, another thing that's not different is that we don't know what's going to happen next and we don't have control over everything. That's, that's always been true, right? We were never true. promised tomorrow. Right, we never right. knew when we would get hit with some terrible disease or by a bus. Sorry, Tony. Um, and, you <laughs> didn't know, say school bus. You just said bus. <laughs> no, I didn't say school bus, right? So in, in some ways, we are just confronted with all of the things that were um, true anyway. Right. And and here's another thing that's not different. Like it's not the same as being in the same room, but we are having a conversation. We do get to take care of each other and be intimate. We it's not not different that we need each other, and that we can that's yeah you know consciously know, take like, care of each other. The first the, the first uh, panel we did, which was like I think it was a week or two after we closed down, and I remember Rich Honan was one of my first guests, and he said, "I needed this." Like he goes, this is really good. I just needed to see, I, I feel I'll beat by it. Or I'm probably not paraphrasing him great, but it was that idea of just, again, it's not the same, but it's something, you know? Yeah. So I'm gonna, again, and I, Darren, I'm gonna get to you, but I want, you're gonna be like a question, one more question down, okay? Cause you, you have some ideas of how you guys have changed. You're gonna illustrate for us what you've used in a uh, little presentation. But I just wanna just in general, and Mike Sikosio kind of touched on it already, and I want to get a little more deeper, if we can, about how this has challenged you as a leader. And maybe even if there's some things that you can say, I used to do this, and I know it's kind of becoming vulnerable, so pick your, pick your moment, but maybe something you've done, you've done differently, maybe things that you've tried. Um, but you know, how, have, how has this challenged you as a leader and, and adjusted you know, the, your approach to leadership? I see you nodding your head, Guha, so I'll go with you first. And then anybody else, just jump on in. Uh, so, you know, I think a few things that uh, behaviors that are, let's say are here to stay, or I didn't realize how, um, you know, as soon as we went off site and started this remote work and that kind of thing, because of course we had to, um, it, you know, it became obvious to us, hey, we, we've got to communicate more. And, you know, we need to do that. So let's just start doing town halls every week keep them to a half an hour so they don't become burdensome, don't overly prep it or produce it. Um, and then soon enough, our um, regularly scheduled program of being productive offsite, you know, it's like, you know, there's only so much of that you do. So you start getting to do a little bit more funny, a little bit more human uh, and that kind of thing. And then you move into forward focus items and what's next. And suddenly you become a bit more of the current events and here's what it means for us. Um, and it all points to, hey, we, we were just not doing any of this stuff before. <laughs> we got used to sit, staying on the same floor that we used to be. 
talking with the same group of people that we usually do. Yeah. You know, delegating other things and not being in touch. Um, you know, even like a forum like this, I was really happy that you reached out, Rick, because normally we'd say, hey, we, we got to get together and do this around a table. And then that's a production and it's difficult and it takes time and, uh, you, you know, all these things. And it's just not the case, right? These are things that we should have been doing all along. So I think from a leadership behavior, it's not that this is uh, a new insight. It's just practicing these things. You get out of practice pretty quickly. And this has really made at least me better at doing many of those things, better connecting and things like that. So it's, it's a weird paradox that way. Yeah. I hope we can carry this forward. Yeah. You, you know, I'm going to build on what Guha just said, because let's face it, in everyday life, the gravity kind of makes you a little insular. We, we get siloed, even when we don't want to be. We're still partnering, but time just gets us back into our silo. So me, my lesson has also been, it's all about partnership. It's all about collaboration. So when COVID hit, we're running a shelter. We've got 100 homeless men, women, and children staying with us. And they've got no place to go. So we are it for them. So we better figure this out. Women's and children's shelter was pretty stable because they're in apartments. But the men sleep in dorms. And it's not social distancing. It's congregate living. So we had to get new space. Literally overnight, we had to get new space. So we didn't have it in our buildings. So we had to figure out where are we going to sleep people. We had a few apartments we moved them into. But across the street from City Mission on Lafayette Street is the St. Joseph's Rectory. Beautiful, big yellow building, um, only used as a church office. We went and met with Father Isopo. We said, Father, we don't have room for our people. Could we possibly have some of our guys sleep in your rectory? And, and I'll never forget what he said. He says, absolutely. You get these guys in here. You keep them safe. I said, Father... What is this going to cost? We need to pay for this. He says, that's not a discussion for today. You keep your men safe. So 12 men moved in this rectory overnight, and something amazing happened. They became friends with the office staff. One of the secretaries began to make cookies for them. They would have lunch together. And I remember saying to Father Isopo towards the end, I said, you know, Father, we've been neighbors. We've lived next to each other for years. It took a pandemic to make us neighbors. Wow. We've already launched a new ongoing partnership that will hopefully last long after this pandemic has ended. So again, crisis sometimes forces us to reach out. In reaching out, we discover this is the best part after all, and we need to live like this. It took a pandemic to make us neighbors. Wow. Mm -hmm. Somebody else? Uh. You know, it's an interesting question. Um, I think one of the things that this has pushed us to do was make quicker, more unilateral decisions. You know, as improvisers, uh, we really value collaboration and we really value consensus and um, keep making everybody happy. And... Um, we're, we're good with uncertainty, right? We're good with sort of going with the flow, but especially in the beginning, there were some ways that we as leaders needed to step up and say, nobody knows, nobody has the right answer, and people are freaking, a little freaked out. We just need to make a call, and we need to mm -hmm. step into owning that call and, uh, and holding space for being solid so that other people can be a little freaked out. And- um, Good. So, so that, that was the sort of muscle we needed to stretch as leaders, I think. Um, That's really good. Yeah. Tony, any thoughts? Well, I, I think the, the big part that I say that we, we did is right away from the first day. And by the way, I uh, made a decision way before the state mandated to go home. So we actually went home before. We did that too. week. So I did. And, you know, I just felt the coming. I just, I'm, I'm born in Italy, so I have a lot of you know, family. In Italy, I saw that coming over there. I have a, I have a also, I have a company that's in Shanghai. So I just saw the wave coming. So it was March 13th. We already, you know, we already been preparing ourselves that we're going home. And you know what I did is I, you know, I always thought, I always thought I was hands-on leader. I was always felt like you know, I'm, I'm there. And I've already made these statements in the past that you know, honestly, I was just, you know, I was a leader a uh, few times maybe once a week, uh, a couple of times a month, I was a leader. And, you know, as a leader, you're not a leader just 
you know, when you have a meeting to be a new leader, you have a, you're supposed to be a leader all the time. And it, the, one of my biggest mm -hmm. lessons learned is that you're a leader every single day, every mm -hmm. single moment. And really what it did is that this created a way that I need to make sure that I'm connected to every employee, every manager. Uh, it's important that's, that we keep it being positive. And I learned that, like, wow, what was I doing before? You know, I get so much done. I get so much done now in a day. Yes, I definitely work significantly more. I, my day typically starts before 8 a.m. I'm home, and I go to bed around 1 o'clock in the morning, and I do an email to everybody. I, I spend some time with my son. We've got a basketball hoop now. We're playing a little bit of basketball. I run with him. We bike. I spend a little bit of time every single day, but he was school. And so, but I really think that's a lesson learned for me that a leader is not just, you know, during your meetings or once a week or, you know, your recap, it's set every single day. Mm. And a leader, and by the way, I love what you said, Ken, about making a decision. You got to make a clear cut. Sometimes I don't know what this means. I, we can't decide right now. It's okay to be, I don't know, but let's think about yeah. it. Let's yeah. it. That's oh, the collaboration, I, I'm such a social person that I'm looking back this past four months that I really I'm impressed how we were able to handle without being social. And I think, you know, it's different, you know, the contacts. And I think that's really tells tells me that when you put very smart people and you put motivated individuals and they have goals and, and they're thinking about the safety, just amazing things happen that you can't just say, hey, let's put a, a X dollar amount bonus for this to happen. I don't think so. It, it, it's just something that happens in, inside of us. And uh, I, I, I've grown so much as a leader and as an individual. And uh, I'm grateful that you know, we're, my family's been healthy. And, and obviously, uh, we want to continue that way. So that's good. Me, that's, good. Good. that's really cool. I mean, that's really, um, I enjoyed listening to you, uh, Tony. I, I, I actually yeah. add for myself, um, I became a better listener because of this mute button. <laughs> I don't interject as much. You seem like you were always, I mean, I, you seem like you've always been a good listener, but that's because I talk a lot. I put on, I put on a good show, but the mute button helps. <laughs> um, Darren, do you want to talk a little bit about, like, let's answer that question, first of all, about how this has challenged you as a leader, but then I think we can segue into a little bit of well, what's worked for you. And then I'm going to go around with everybody else about how you've adjusted the way you do business. But I'd like to ask Darren, first of all, just how has this challenged you as a leader? And then move into what you've used to, you know, or adjustments you've made. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Rick. And I, I do think it's a nice segue into kind of what I wanted to share. Um, at Janelle Group, every, we're, we're, everything that we do is about our people and about our culture, right? So we've really kind of cracked the code on culture and we've got that special thing going on and uh, we, we worked so hard to get into this. New, we got into this new office just uh, a month before all this went down. And, and again, there's something actual tan, actually tangible going on when you come into our space and you see everybody connecting. And to take everybody out of that and pull them out of that, um, it's been a huge challenge for us, right? You know, our, this, this special thing that we, we talk about and uh, we focus on is gone. And, and that was... Uh, really tough to, to do. And, and so we've tried a whole bunch of different things. And one thing actually that I, that I wanted to share, and, and I think this is what we were talking about, Rick. Um, let's see if you can see this. Oh, shucks. Um, let's see. Do share screen and. Oh yeah, it's gonna make me quit. Why don't you jump to somebody else? I'll quit and then I'll, I'll do it back in. Cause I made you a co-presenter, no? No, yeah, I think I have to, uh, I have to actually I'll make you the host. I'll make you the host. No, 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 Hang on, hang on, hang on, one sec. Sorry. I made you co-host because I was a little nervous, but I can make you the host. No, it was my, it was my PowerPoint. Let me bring up my, um, I got the slideshow in uh, two different places. So let's take a look here, see if I can do Tony, this. It's so nice to see your office, by the way. It's been a long time since it's I've seen so it. nice to be here, guys. <laughs> I was on the terrace today and, um, we brought all of our plants. We normally have a lot of beautiful plants right on, this, on State Street. And, uh, you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen. And we didn't want to worry about our plants and our nice pots. So we brought them all on a terrace. And that felt like I was in this beautiful botanical garden. And I just felt like, wow, it was such a good feeling. It really was. And uh, 
just just to be here in downtown. I know a lot of things going on in, in the city here, and uh, I, I pray that things settle back and we're back here. I just love seeing people walking in the street, and obviously it's not going to happen anytime soon. But just it was great. It just feels so nice, you know. I'm here, and I I, I had abandoned my desk because I don't have anything on my desk anymore. Um, my my computer, my my monitors are all at home, so. I'm just sitting in my conference room on my table here at my desk in my, my room. It just feels so nice. And I just have to turn right and I'm seeing downtown as people having dinner outside in, in Johnny's patio. Just I feel like if I could just like narrow mine, it feels like there's nothing wrong with the world. I you know, see, you know, just something about this. It just feels so good. Very good. But, um, all right. Uh, can I tell you something about Darren? Darren, you're about to show something. You're talking about the space. I got it. Yeah. Space. Sure. Can you can you see my screen now? I do. Yeah. Can I see something okay. about this? Something about no. We just want when we first moved to 440 State Street, we wanted the best place to work at. We did, and it's like, well, clearly, you know, people like the space, and we won that. You know, it was very prestigious for us, and we didn't win it for a long time. And we went, we went uh, uh, six years without winning it again. So then we wanted last year, and uh, clearly the space is not as beautiful and clean or shiny as the first day we walked in. So I know you you moved to a new space and you're you got really robbed from having that feeling of going to a new space. But we wanted last year, and I remember on the 13th when I met with the, with the managers and we're gonna go home, and I made it clear to everybody we didn't win best place to work in 2019 because of the bricks and mortar. I think we won in 2013 when we moved here, but not this year. It's because there's a special people that work here at Chance Planet. And you know, and it really, that's something that guys, some of you have been in, in this building. I make a big deal about the space, but really, wow. It's of so much about those faces that you're about to show us. Sure, sure. Um, Can I do the enough tap dancing for you to get this thing working? Yeah, no, I think I'm good. You guys can see my screen, correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So um, one of the things that we had a lot of success with is uh, we, we use Slack for our, our, our communication. And uh, one of the things we've always had a lot of success with is, is we have a really cool goal setting process at the company. Everybody sets one personal goal and one professional goal. And we've had such amazing goals uh, accomplished over the years. And, and with COVID happening in the quarantine, it really kind of took that away from us. So we um, we switched gears a little bit and we created this Slack channel called COVID goals, right? And we said to the team and to ourselves, right, this, this thing is going to pass, right? We're not going to be dealing with this in five years from now, 10 years from now. Well, certainly I hope not, right? Eventually this thing is going to pass. And so when we look back at this time, you're going to say to yourself, well, how did I respond? What did I do? Did I just curl up and, and get scared and not do anything? Or did I take the opportunity to slow my schedule down for all of these things that I've always wanted to do, get more fit, build something around the house, spend more time with my family, whatever it is, all of these things that you say, wow, well, I just don't have any time for that. Well, now we have time, right? So we created this Slack channel. We challenged the team. As you go out and you do awesome things during this time, post them and share them in this Slack channel. And so here's, here's some examples of, of some of the things. And again, I, I kind of pulled this out of Slack just to show, um, you know, what people have done. Home improvement projects. This is just a fraction of them. We have had so many people transform their home. I know myself, I've had my four kids painting the entire house. We, we, we put like 40 <laughs> gallons of paint on the wall. It's brutal. Um, gardening and, and a guy's a guy cut like three cords of wood. Uh, people building, uh, building gardens and farms for the first time, cooking amazing meals, people making sushi at home. And, and uh, uh, one of our, uh, Emily bought this amazing smoker and she's, she's posting all the different uh, things that she's making. My brother actually drove around and delivered food to, to everybody. Um, wow. Hikes and fitness, you know, we don't have time to work out enough. That's what everybody says. Well, now we have time, right? We've got guys hiking like, the guy Dan on here, it's just hiked over 10 hikes. That's not even true. I, he's got, he's over 20 hikes now. Um, you know, people are running, uh, running miles and, and working out and doing some really amazing things. 
Um, one of our one of our girls, uh, Tanya Sutfin, she's a she's an amazing person with uh, creating puzzles and crossword puzzles. Her husband write, writes uh, crossword puzzles for the New York Times, wow. and so he created a, a JG, a Janelle Group uh, crossword puzzle that everybody took. Um, people that are using 3D printers to print masks for PPE and sending them to hospitals and and, and different workers. Um, different ways of staying connected. We take we've taken some of our physical clubs. Right, we've got a um, a beer club that meets on Fridays. We got a breakfast club. Uh, there's a group that plays trivia all the time, and we've taken that all online. Uh, one of the coolest ones. One of our guys, um, Dylan. He he plays guitar and he plays in a band. He started an online course and he's teaching four different of, of our our people how to play the guitar, and they're That's making awesome. real progress. Absolutely amazing. Um, and then now we've kind of done a soft uh, reopening of the office. And so uh, pe the people are here, we're, we're, we're putting lunches and meals on all the time and giving people an opportunity to cook for one another. One of our guys took it upon himself to put this together. Every week he puts together the schedule of, you know, what are the clubs, what are the meetups, what's going on virtually. And- uh, Can you send really me the just... menu? Can, can I get a copy of the menu so I know when I should pop in? <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> man, come on down. Today was breakfast sandwich uh, Thursday nice. and they were phenomenal. So, nice. you know, that, that, that's it. I'll, I'll stop sharing for oh, now. Oh, that's but awesome. I just, I just thought that was a-, a That is very- that... that is really good. I'm sorry, Darren, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's just, you know, we try a lot of these things. You know, you, you, we used to do this. Now we're going to do it on Zoom and we've all had it. A lot of these things suck, right? You do it and you're just like, it's just not the same. It didn't translate. This is one of those things. The COVID goals Slack channel mm -hmm. is actually better than the way we, the way we were doing it before. And so I, mm -hmm. I just thought maybe mm -hmm. people would get inspired by seeing all those people doing awesome things. My, my pastor said something that I thought was interesting. So not to get too spiritual on you guys, but you know me, so that's just the way it is. The Apostle Paul wrote most of the Bible in prison. So that's like making really good use of his time, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, you know while you're, am I right, Michael Sakosha? Did I get that right? Yeah, so the majority absolutely. of that was he was in prison. So um, that's really good stuff. You know, it made me think we have a thing on Fridays. Tony does so a thing. the same for Gandhi and then Nelson Mandela as well. Oh, that, very yeah. good. Very good. And narrow. Mm -hmm. and, and narrow? Narrow. Uh, Jawa. Jawar Harlal Nero. No, oh, okay, I thought you were talking about Prime Minister Nero, of, uh, like the dictator. Not, not the emperor. Okay. No, no, he, was, he put <laughs> people in prison. <laughs> he had a fiddling habit, evidently, too. But, um, uh, <laughs> his violin. Exactly. But um, we do this thing on Fridays where Tony does it. So our address is 440. And so at 440 every Friday, Tony gives, um, really, it's not, a, it's not like a instructional type of talk. Tony, you can talk a little bit about it, but it's basically just a, a fun time unless he shows Mother's Day pictures where we all were sobbing. Oh my Otherwise, gosh, it's usually yeah. really upbeat and we all have all these selfies that are playing, kind of like what you guys do, Darren, a little bit. So seeing, Tony, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, actually, so we, have, we built this product a few years ago for fun, more for trade shows. It's called Selfie Finder that uh, you would actually post these pictures with some comments. And by the way, uh, we had it running at um, the Empire Games and also at, at the uh, the Siena Games, uh, the basketball games. We actually had that running. So we built this product just for fun. And so we're using it on, on Friday, on Fridays. And so, yes, there were some cool pictures. And, uh, and we always have a theme. Um, the theme, uh, last week we did a virtual five, uh, 5K. So that was... Everyone had to put their pictures up, so that was a lot of fun. You can see everyone sweating and so forth. But yeah, the one for Mother's Day. So I always have like some sort of a, and again, this is where I realized, like, I, as a leader, I got to be a leader all the time. So I always have some sort of, I want to just be some inspirational. It's always around music. I love music, so I always have some sort of a good song. And um, so it was Mother's Day weekend, so I'm thinking, help you know, get pictures of your mom and all that. So it's just, so I always start with. Hi, how's everyone doing? And everyone's like, you know, celebrating. Then, of course, I put this, it's a slideshow. It's a really cool looking thing. It's, it's got this collage. I put the song Wind Beneath My, uh, My Wings by Ben Miller. And, you know, I thought it was a good thing. It's your mom, right? It's, it's that kind of stuff, right? And, uh, and I'm starting watching all these pictures. You know, of course, I have my mom there too. You know, somewhere I get my mom would pop up. And, uh, I started getting choked up because I started seeing people's 
you know, how they're hugging. And, you know, some of those people probably not even around anymore. And it just made me realize, holy cow, get it together, man. You're going to have to like talk in like 30 seconds. You got to get it together. So the song ended, the, you know, the, the, the thing stopped. And of course now I'm live like this, I'm like, whew, I don't know if I could get, if you guys don't mind, I'd probably need like another 20 more seconds. I didn't expect those pictures to be that intense. And, you know, and it just seemed real. I got so many emails afterwards, like, wow, Tony, that felt like you were right there in my living room. And I think that one of the things that came out of it from this whole experience for us has been that we've kind of, in a, in a weird way, we've gotten to know each other better. We get to see each other's houses. Darren, you got to see some gardens. I don't know if normally you would have seen those kind of things yeah. or wood pile. You know, you get to kind of see each other in your home environment. Mm -hmm. Mike? That's right. That's right. I don't know if you guys, anybody else doing anything that kind of helps keep morale up during this, during this time? Well, I, I mean, we, we are, as I say, we are continuing to do our classes and our shows and, and connect, but not only that, but one of the things that we're being hired to do is, um, is bring this to companies and communities, right? So Darren, you and your, and your company have figured out how to do that for yourself. Not everyone, not everyone has found that within themselves. So one of the things that our clients are coming to us for is to say, how do we do this? How do we stay connected? How do we have people, ha we're being hired to do things um, that we've sort of branded the resilience gym, right? So how do, how do people find ways to both individually and also collectively as a community, find those inner resources to stay upbeat, to f stay feeling connected to each other, to find opportunity in the, in the hard times, or conversely, to give themselves a break and say, this is really stressful and I don't have to be a superhero and it's okay to feel overwhelmed or feel afraid or, uh, you know, not feel like I have to take an opportunity, but I can just be terrified. And there are other people out there. I'm not alone in feeling terrified. And that's another way to come and build community and find the support that I need and that I'm not alone. So that's actually work that we've yeah. been doing. You know, I think for us, this time that's created a lot of energy for us is it put our mission to the test. And what I mean by that is so City Mission, we're blessed. We get 700 hours of volunteer service every single week. That's a huge amount of time and talent. It literally left overnight when COVID hit. So that created huge gaps in what we tried to do. So, but this created an opportunity, for, not only for our residents, but for our graduates who work on staff. At City Mission, 30 of our employees are former residents of the mission. Now they're working. Well, overnight, we said to them, it's not just enough to work now. you got to be the leader. You're going to have to stand in the gap. You're going to have to do things you've never done before. And so energy has produced. We have watched so many of these men and women meet the challenge. And, and what you see happening, is not only does the work get done, but you see that moment of inspiration come on their eyes like, wow, I can do it. I can do this. And a number, number of people said, I'm discovering purpose. And what it feels like to give back, you know, the science of happiness, no matter what background you're coming from, is pretty much settled that you discover happiness by doing for others. That that really is the ultimate way to get to that highest level of happiness. So we're watching our theory that the people we serve have greatness in them. We're watching that grow and go and, and become manifest all around us. Last night I went to a men's group meeting at the mission, and one of the residents said, you know, I'm I'm 52 years old. I failed my whole life. I'm not in good health. I, I don't know where to go. He said, I need to talk to Anthony, who was one of our graduates, who's a high profile staff member. Anthony was at the meeting. He said, let's go. I came in this morning, early in the morning. That man was sitting out under our pavilion. I said, how'd you make out? Huge smile on his face. He said, I'm better. And he said, and look at I got this too. And it was just a daily devotional reading that Anthony had given him. So that's more than anything, that has been the source of our energy, that this belief we had, this, this thing that we wanted to build a mission on is, is happening more and more. And to watch our people elevate and become the leaders that 
from a faith-based perspective that God has created them to be. I, I've never been more energized than, now it hasn't been all perfect, it's been a lot of failures, but there's been enough success for us to say, let's keep on going forward, no matter what the obstacles, no matter what the adversity, this is so worth it. It's amazing the things you can do when you're tested and your back is against the wall. Right. Yes. You would never put yes. yourself in that position. We would never put ourselves in this type right. of, you know, difficulty right. but what you do when you have to yeah so true so are there any things in this is a question that it's a little kind of nuanced kind of hard to think about maybe but i just wonder if there's anything that maybe you once thought was really important that maybe now you realize eh, it's not so important anyway but maybe it was you know it can be sometimes busy work or just something that you think is or it could be vice versa something that maybe you kind of poo-pooed in the past now and you realize you know what that actually is kind of important now. Anything that can make, come to mind on either one of those? And I know it's a little bit of a, not an easy question here. I didn't give you these. Well, there are a couple of a couple couple answers that are on the easier side to that. So I won't claim to have any kind of unique insight in saying this. But I'd tell you that, um, you know, the thing that's surprising to me is how much of our work can be done uh, offsite. And, uh, I don't, I'm not a believer that it all can be done offsite all the time, but I'm genuinely surprised at how productive that we can be offsite. And uh, so that, it's a bit of an eye opener. It means that we have to change sort of the way we're working, not in a pure offsite manner or pure onsite manner, but even in terms of where we reach for talent. Not everything has to be located in the capital region that we do, and not everything has to be co located. Um, in addition to sort of flexibility for employees and Minnesota, where we're working from. You know, my brother is in Vermont. He's there for weeks at a time. You know what? That's a great summer. But he's also working and he's extremely productive and that kind of thing. And that's the, you so know, it you allows to, us to adapt our lifestyle when, to live as well as work. You th you, um, I think in the past, it might be this perception that if someone's working remotely, they're really like watching Oprah and having bonbons. And I think well, the Oprah's not on anymore. But there's that sense of... Mm -hmm. but, now you realize, no, you can be very productive. And remote and productivity be... is built on trust. It forces you to trust. Whereas before you were like, I don't know, do I need to audit all the work? You know, the thought crossed my mind and it's not the case. You, you actually really, you're put in a position where you have to trust and it works. Um, so that's, that's one that I would say is, uh, you know, a surprise and a, and a bit of a change. Um, right. Was there something else? I I think for me, it's it's very easy to take pride in accomplishments and things you build and a pandemic shows you they can be wiped out overnight. And what you thought was so secure and so well structured and it's gone, you, you had no control over it. But what does last, and I've heard each panelist talk about this, the people, the, our coworkers, our families, you, you, get, you come back to the basics really. If I'm gonna have a legacy, it's not gonna be in this program or this building. It's going to be in the people I poured my life into, and, and, and perhaps they can go forward and carry something that I was privileged as the leader to invest in them. So buildings are great, programs are great, but boy, aren't they fragile. The people, people go on and, and people endure. Yeah, I want to just uh, build on that, Mike. I mean, it's, it's really profound because, you know, what I found in our own situation when we went through COVID was, you know, the community that came around us to support our family. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, people that, you know, you're friends and you have a good time together and things like that, but truly it just kind of came out and really helped us through, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, yeah. meal support, right. or other things like that, or just inquiries or the, the medical community and, you know, that kind of thing. It shows yes. that, you know, the world is not transactional. You know, we're right. not built right. by transactions. Right. You, know, you push a little bit more revenue, a little bit more earnings mm -hmm. and, you know, that kind of thing. It really gives you a lot of perspective in terms of what's yes. important. People endure. Communities endure. Do. That's good. Well, I, got to, I feel like um, with uh, you know, a lot of people always you know, know my story is really my family moved to this country when I was nine years old. And uh, you know, we came to this country for, the, for a better opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm, I'm grateful and I, I feel very fortunate that I've I've accomplished what I've accomplished, but everyone actually, but I've been always been trying to keep my feet on the ground because everyone asked me, Oh, it's so great. Why you continue working so hard? Because I'm six months away from losing everything. And I've been saying that for years. Oh, come on. You can't say, no, no, really. 
I don't know what it could be. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm six months away from any given day on the calendar and I could lose everything I've ever worked for. I mean, everything, house, everything. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So everyone's like, yeah, yeah. Honestly, this was put to a test. The theory that I've been saying for years, like, you know, you could have everything in the world, we could lose it in six months. This was definitely a test. And, uh, and I think that's really what made me realize uh, I was serious about that you could lose everything you have in six months. And we, I, that theory almost came true. And that's, that's a scary part. Mm -hmm. um, the other part that I love and I tell you, it's something that seeing my, my wife and seeing my son that often, I have a dog, he's 12 years old. What did my dog do when I was not around? I actually feel so sad for him. You know, guys, I feel like when we come back to the office, my dog's coming with me. Yeah. I actually feel so sad for that. We're going to need counseling, one or the other. Oh, guys, I'm serious because when it's thundering now and it's weather, and the weather's, you know, like, you know, it's getting dark out, like, like right now, it looks like it's going to be a thunderstorm. The dog is like shivering. He comes right next to me, like, well, we're normally not home at that time. So I yeah. feel like, Oh man, so I cannot leave that dog home ever again. So, but these are things that I know they sound silly, but you just don't, you didn't pay attention to these things. It's like, wow. Well, I think it's just that sense of appreciation. You realize what you got and maybe you don't always, you know, we can take for granted the things that we have. Anybody else, our cat? It's, well, I, well, I just have to jump on the pets bandwagon. This is a boon for the pets. So clearly, I don't know what it means for the humans, but the pets are happy. And we had a turkey walking through our driveway the other day. So nature's happy, whatever else oh, is going yes, on. Yes, <laughs> You know, um, I think, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just sort of jump on the, uh, I'll, I'll end where I started, which is, I think there's a lot of stuff that isn't different and that just is having a spotlight shown on it right now and is being revealed to us in this moment and one of that one of those things is i think that something that we all paid lip service to but now we really recognize right our family is important our relationship is important you know all of the things that we are you know we say well when we die we're never going to say i you know we're, what we're going to what are we going to miss when we're on our deathbed right it's time with family it's time with other people it's feeling like we're living in alignment with our values and we're doing what we can and we're a force for good and that we're helping and that we're connecting and that we need each other right and that we're there when for each other and and i think that's what this moment is giving us an opportunity to do in all sorts of a variety of ways and um and that and that's that's the gift it feels to me of this moment. It kind of reminds me when you just said that. I hadn't thought about this until you just said it. But you ever see like a TV show or a movie where um, they the, the guy? I just was watching this, and uh, I think it was The Mentalist. Anyway, but the guy was supposedly dead, but he really wasn't dead. Yeah. So he got to see what everybody said about well, it. The, the, you know what's? Well, uh, we almost kind of get to see some things that we would be missing if we, you know, it's like it's a little perspective. Right, it's a wonderful life, right? I mean, the greatest Christmas movie of all time, right? Like, greatest movie of that's all time. True. Next to Rocky, yeah, greatest movie. <laughs> greatest movie of okay, all that's, time. I have right? a picture. That's Jimmy Stewart right there. And we no. don't, you know, and as everybody's just saying, like we don't have control. We have this illusion of control, right? We don't have it anyway. So we get this has just given us. We've just been. That's able to see the truth of it all. What's you know, the expression? How do you make God laugh? Tell him your plans. Right, exactly. Right. Exactly. Darren, thoughts from you? Sure. Uh, not 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 uh, necessarily addressing that question, but uh, <laughs> why bother? <laughs> why bother addressing the question? I'm asking. Well, just kind of as we're getting closer to wrapping up, I, you know, I'm just super grateful to live in America. You know, you there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in our country. You turn on the TV for five minutes, you say, "What's going on?" But my personal experience has been people working together, amazing healthcare professionals, PPP loans going out and support for businesses. And it's just been, it's just awesome to live in America in the year 2020. I, I just love our community and, and I've been uh, really recharged by that. And it's just so weird when you turn on the TV, you just see like the opposite story. And I'm just like, I just wish that more people would tell, 
tell the story of positivity if that's what they're truly experiencing. And it doesn't seem like we get that anywhere. So that was kind of like my, my kind of final wrap up thought. Yeah. Well, I, I do want to go around to one quick thing, but I do want to say like, I, I see like my neighbors, we all come out, we talk a lot, six feet apart. I'm wearing a mask all the time, but we're, and we're talking a lot. And it is kind of like some of the things that just what Mike Sikoshi said about his, his church neighbor, you know, is that we're like, we talk all the time and, and we all come from different, you know, areas. We're all, you know, but we all have different perspectives and it's, it's just been great, you know, to, it forces us out of our houses, you know, and, and to be in each other's lives. You know, you can live next to somebody for all these years and have very little interaction. For sure. So my last, I want to go around the horn real quickly um, and just ask if you, it could be a final takeaway or a biggest lesson learned, or you can be like Darren and just say whatever you want to say that has nothing to do with it. You know, but, uh, <laughs> no, but um, so I'm going to start with, um, with Kat. We'll go up and, you know, Kat, uh, Guha, Darren, Tony, and we'll end with Mike Sikosia. Okay. So final takeaways or biggest lesson learned. My final takeaway is that I am part of an amazing local community and it is such a privilege to have had this opportunity to hear about the stories and activities that are happening in my very own backyard um, that I didn't know about as I'm talking to all my friends across the globe. And I'm just, I'm very impressed and grateful for um, to have had a chance to hear about all the wonderful work that's going on. And I'm glad everybody's healthy. Yes. Thank you. Guha. Still have a challenge with this mute button. <laughs> technology, I know you and technology are. <laughs> it's, it's the mute button in every application. Although I like Darren's. I can't tell you how many sales meetings I've sat in where they're like, your mute's on. It's like, Tony, how many collective minutes have we lost as a company? <laughs> the mute button. Go ahead, Guha. Anyway, big, big takeaway, for, there's a couple different things. One is like, Please. you know, the pandemic is a reminder that anything can happen at any time. Mm -hmm. I am impressed with people around the world, actually, not just in our community, but yes, in our community, as to how we can rise to the occasion and change. You know, our, our adaptability is just incredible. Like yeah. we're, we're yeah. a quarter into this thing from a stay at home order and we haven't, the society has not collapsed. I was thinking three weeks into it, I don't know how we're gonna last you know, after the first day. I'm just impressed. And we're looking at this and we say, well, let's dig into the long haul. We have to beat this thing. There's no alternative. What are we gonna do? That's right. We have to beat this thing. We're gonna, be, we're gonna beat this thing. We'll take some lessons forward and that kind of thing. we're gonna beat this thing. Um, I, you know, so that, that is kind of the big headline for me. And it's just an appreciation for how everybody rises to the occasion uh, to yeah. do that. That's good. Yeah. There is something to learn from around the world, though, too, which is that, you know, we have the greatest resources of any any country in the world. We have an amazing community. We have the most positive people that I can imagine meeting. Yet we fail on so many things as a nation. So I think what this has revealed to me is that at a community and civil society basis, America is strong. As a government and a nation, is incredibly vulnerable. Like it's a horrible response compared to Japan or UK or even Italy. Italy is beating, beating this thing. And we have this massive rampant second wave. And it's just a complete failure at a national just level. To, just to defend America a little bit. It's a little job I have. No, but-, but No, no, but I don't, I'm not attacking in America. The, but we're such an independent are people. You know, we are so independent, you know? And it is not other countries are more lock and step. And we're more no, like, I'm, no, no, no. You don't think so? I, 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 mean, I work with these people every day. You find the most independent. I mean, have you seen an Italian that's not independent, mi independently what? minded? <laughs> I mean, come on, Tony. Your family yeah, members. But, but Guha, in my town, my town mm -hmm. a couple months ago, you couldn't leave your house. Compliant. Mm -hmm. a month. I was not, Very compliant. Was not, not during World War II, which I had a year for my grandparents, that you couldn't leave the house without paper. But a couple months, about a month ago, you couldn't leave the house. If two people were in a house, were, were, if two people were in a car going to the supermarket from the same house, you someone's going to get fined, or you better get out of here. That just happened a month ago. So therefore, so that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Individually, times really people been, are independently minded. They were a country that came together that. to beat it. But that I'm saying hard. that. But I'm saying we're I don't think more, I could handle that. 
We're, I don't think I would have handled that if this happened in Schenectady, New York, in Albany, New York. I don't think we could have handled that. We're not exactly known as being a very compliant, like... That would have been tough. I, I would have had a tough time with it, guys. I think I would have freaked out if it was that kind of lockdown that I couldn't leave my house. I think they dealt with a national crisis better. I think they dealt with a national crisis better. I think Americans are amazing. But yeah. as a national government, complete right. failure. The people in China, guys, uh, you know, we have a company there. They couldn't leave the house. The food was coming to their house. I don't, I don't want to get too off track because I there's a Sorry. million way to go in this because Montana <laughs> has like you can't have a national it's there's a lot, it's very right. complex. But I'm gonna use scary, this that's really it. Go out scary, right? You know this. You've gone through it. Darren, I'm gonna sure, go sure, sure. Um kind of um piling on to what we started this on, um, you know, just the resiliency of, of the people, right? The previous generations have gone through world wars, great depressions, plagues, horrible things. And, uh, you know, this is something that's affecting the whole world. And, and I'm just, I'm kind of happy and proud to, to see the response and the resiliency of, of the people. That's, that's my, my main takeaway from this. That's a, I love the word resiliency. Um, mm -hmm. I think I heard kind of all of you say some aspect of that. So, Tony? Listen, I think, uh, guys, we're all different. That's really, that is something that we have to all recognize. We're all different. We're one people, but looking around the world, people are different. And we are different here in the United States. Why I love the United States, because we're all different. And, and we are a, a kid that have comes from a different country, can't speak English. Mom and dad doesn't have any really good jobs. And I was able to make it. I don't have any, I'm not, I don't have a skill that, and I don't have a physical skill. I, I, anyone could have done what I did. Anyone could have done what I did. And I think this is where my takeaway is that I want to make sure that this country continues. I want the same kind of opportunity for my son that I had uh, 40 years ago. So that's important. I think this is where so many people in this country are working very hard to make sure that the United States continues. That gives my son, which is the same age, when I came to this country, give him the same exact opportunity. So that's what I, I do believe that. And I think what happened is a takeaway. The world now all is looking at each other. And I think there is going to be something. I think there's going to be some beautiful things here as a takeaway for the world. It's not really are going to be the world at this point. You now we're all talking about different countries. So I, I have this faith that the world will be really one at this point. And if we know, maybe we know there was something happened. 100 years ago, similar kind of things, right, in the pandemic. But I really believe this is something that will, there'll be books written on about this. My son will say, yeah, I lived those. So I, that's my takeaway. Right. We had uh, Dan Pickett on a couple months ago, I think it was. And I think he said something like, we're in chapter one. Right. <laughs> chapter it's one of like, I don't know how many chapters, but it's, you know, Mike Sicosio, close us out here. My cat do um. Oh, cat! You didn't go. Yeah. I think cat went first. Oh, I started. Okay, okay. I I'm sorry. I you told know, you how so fabulous. It's, you a, it's it's a reinforcement of a quote I've always loved. It's a John Wooden quote, legendary coach UCLA basketball. Don't let what you can't do interfere with what you can do. And when you get into a big thing like a pandemic, you're brought up pretty quickly in how much you can't do. But you know what? There's always something I can do. I have things within my power. I might not be able to change national policy, but I can make my neighbor feel better. I, I can make my yard look better. I can help somebody else. So it's really the great freedom in life is that I can't control circumstances, but I get to control my choices. And at the end of the day, I think our greatest capacity to make a difference is in those choices. So don't let what you can't do interfere with what you can do. And there's always something to do. That's great. That's great. You think about the ripple effect of one yes. person, one smile, one helping somebody across the street, or all those things That's have right. a major, major ripple effect. Well, I knew this was going to happen. Two things. One, I knew it was going to go by fast, and it did. And two, I knew I was going to feel inspired and encouraged. And I think that that's really what we've heard from the others. And I think that, you know, I just appreciate your leadership. I appreciate what you do in our community. I'm very, Guha, I was shocked that you had, I did mm -hmm. not know that. I don't know, was that in the media and I missed it? No. <laughs> These things don't go around you in the media. You didn't call anybody on it? But um, no. so I am like, 
you know, because I mean, we all know what happened. You know, we all know Walt Rob passed away, and I I really love that guy, and very sad. It's very very sad. So I'm very happy. He was one of our early investors at Vicar as well. Mm-hmm. And he our came. He was came, he was a very early supporter of the Biz Lab. I got to say this again, just because it's I just as a tribute to Rob, um, Mr. Doctor Rob. You know, he would sit in the front row of most of our events, many of our events. And you know how he spoke in a small, still voice. I'm not saying he's God, by the way, Mike Sokosio, but he spoke in a quiet voice. When he asked a question, he could interrupt anybody who was speaking and nobody ever felt it was rude because <laughs> it's Dr. Rob. And so he would just ask a question and everybody would make sure they were hushed. It was like E.F. Hutton. You know, you guys are old enough to remember E.F. Hutton. So to listen, to hear what he had to say. So he is definitely very much missed. And, you know, I'm glad that you are healthy, Guha, and your brother and family. And so thank, I'm very thankful to hear that. So anyway, I just thank hope you, you all have a great that. night. This will go thank out you, uh, probably in about a week or so. I try to get it out to the, uh, the Biz Lab community that's gone to these events. And you'll see it on Facebook and, um, and YouTube. And I'll send you all an email as well. But um, I just want to appreciate you taking time out and uh, just being real with us. So thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, everybody. It was great Thanks, to be with all of you. Thank you.